Ooh, yes, this is Cricket's Transfer Notebook. And let's get the very latest on the transfer window with Talk Sports Chief, the Chief Football Correspondent, Alex Cook. The Cook said hello. Hi, guys. How are we? Missed you guys. Not spoken to you for a no, while. I missed you. Oh, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> I've missed you, that Cookie. brutal. I've missed Thank you. Thank you. That, that is harsh there. That's almost as harsh as, as his little jibe about David De Gea being Arsenal's backup yeah, goalkeeper. Uh, Cookie, you're, you listen, you're, you know Ramza very well. De Gea has not had a better season than that, has he? Come on. No. There I agree. See, you know, I, I, I actually think it's the right time to move away from David De Gea. Cookie, just quickly, I'm looking at you on YouTube now. People see it looks like you've, you've been enjoying the sun and uh, you've been very well. enjoying the food as well. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> hey, Cookie, oh, that's got nothing to do with me. That is all Andy. <laughs> I, I have overindulged the last couple of weeks. I, I didn't think it made that much difference, but I, I'll get on to the personal trainer on Monday. <laughs> Don't get on him. You might flatten him. <laughs> right, listen, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's stay with Manchester United. Let's stay with Manchester United. What's happening with David De Gea and what's happening with uh, Unana and other players coming in and others out? Do United need to sell in order to buy new players? Please tell me no. Let's start with the good news, shall we? Uh, we know that Afi has agreed with Chelsea for Mason Mount. There's a medical due to take place early next week. So that should be the first signing of the summer and a signing that Eric Ten Hag has very much pushed for. The bad news is I think there do need to be departures if they're to sanction the three positions that Ten Hag really wants to strengthen this summer. That's the centre of midfield, which he's going to do with Mason Mount, a new goalkeeper, and you're right, Andy, discussions well underway with Andre Anana and Inter Milan on that basis, and a number nine. Now, that number nine isn't going to be Harry Kane. I don't think it's going to be Victor Osimhen either, because, well, in the case of Kane, Daniel Levy doesn't want to sell to a Premier League rival, and I think Osimhen is probably uh, too expensive for Manchester United. But they've got a lot of players, haven't they? They need to move on. Mm. Uh, I can see Fred to Fulham. I think Scott McTominay probably will depart between now and the end of the window. You've got the Harry Maguire conundrum because it's pretty clear that he's not part of Eric Ten Hag's plans but he isn't necessarily that keen to head for the exit either so they are going to have to cut their cloth accordingly and this is takeover or no takeover the, the problem that Manchester United have got is that in the last five or six years they've been notoriously bad at selling players and eventually in terms of the balance sheet that catches up with you in terms mm. of FFP restrictions so it, it's not going to be an easy summer but they are trying Cookie let me ask you there's no reason you mentioned a lot of players that United want to move on you mentioned Fred McTominay there's a few more so Maguire being one there's no reason why they can't be let go quickly when you see how quickly Chelsea have let what five six seven mm. players go I mean that just tells me that if a club wants to get rid of players they can do it well, they've had a little bit of assistance from Saudi Arabia. The trouble Manchester United have got is that apart from David De Gea, there doesn't seem to be much Saudi interest in any of their players. And in the case of Harry Maguire, the most expensive defender of all time, they paid £80 million. In order to balance those FFP regulations, they need to claw back as much of that as they possibly can. And let's be honest, they're not going to get anywhere near that for Harry Maguire, are they? So they, they need to raise decent profit from selling those players. Slightly different with Scott McTominay having come through the academy. But certainly in the case of Maguire and say if they wanted to sell Aaron Wan-Bissaka, which I don't actually think is part of the plan now, again, they would have to try and get back somewhere near the big money they paid Crystal Palace for him. Craig, you talked to me about Levi Caldwell. Um, apparently he's going to stay at Chelsea? Not definite. Uh, Chelsea want to keep him. They've been pretty clear on that. They've had interest from... They've had interest from Brighton, but at the moment, Pochettino sees him as someone that he can build this rebuild around. I think Cole Will is, is going to take his time. I think he wants assurances once the season gets underway that he's going to be a uh, first-team regular. What I do know is that he loved his time at Brighton last season, really enjoyed playing under Roberto De Zerbi. And this is a big decision for Cole Will because at the end of the season, there's a European Championships on the horizon. I think he believes that he can force his way into Gareth Southgate's plans to do that. He needs to be in the first 11. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be a decision he'll take lightly. In fact, that contract offer, I think, has been on the table for some time now, certainly since the turn of the year. At the moment, he's just taking stock and avoiding signing it. If he does go to Brighton, it would take a club record offer. OK, just quickly, we've got about a minute left. Uh, Dominic, I hope I get this right, Sabozlai, RB Leipzig to Liverpool. Where are we at with that one? You're close. I think it's Sabozlai, uh, but I'll let you off for that, Andy. Right? Despite... Oh, Saboz, OK, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Despite your jibe at my weight. Um, <laughs> I think this is one that Liverpool want to get down. He's been linked with Newcastle. No definite interest from Newcastle as far as I'm concerned. The reason it's come to light today is that Sabosley has a release clause in his RB Leipzig contract. It's £60 million. It expires 
at midnight. So if they get to pay that release clause, they're battling against the clock. That's not to say if it doesn't happen today, it won't. But if they're going to get in for that release clause, that deal needs to be tied up pretty quickly. Cookie, I apologise what I said. You look fantastic. <laughs> you can't take it back now. No, I'm not taking it back. I'm just going to suddenly get back to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Um, thanks for... <laughs> <laughs> Cookie, we love you. Thanks for coming on. Have a great weekend, pal. Cheers, guys. There you go. That was a wonderful Alex Crook, TalkSport's chief football correspondent with Cookie's Notebook. Hmm. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.